We have a workforce of hourly employees, and we have this huge contracting workforce of casual workers. At any given point in time, we'll have 6,000-plus people sitting on our database. Some days, we may have 6,000-plus people out to work. Some days, we may have 200. So we're a hugely fluctuating contracting organization, but those casual workers, they work for three or four different companies at any given moment in time. And in London, if there are all sorts of events on rugby, football, tennis, cricket, we're all competing in the same pool. So we've got to be different and better than our competitors to compel people to want to work for us over them. So our legacy um, process was very, very um, decentralized. The units were all doing it themselves. It was mega paper heavy. Um, Compliancy was um, hit and miss. I used to not sleep very well at night. There were really bad audit issues. Um, <clears throat> and most importantly for me, the candidate experience was variable, um, sometimes really good, sometimes really dreadful. Um, the time to hire was a catastrophe, and we lost a really huge amount of candidates. I couldn't really tell you how many because we couldn't measure anything. Um, the quality of candidates was um, also variable because we didn't have really a plan. Couldn't tell you how much it cost to hire anybody. The talent pool, I don't know how engaged it was because I don't know what it was. Um, the hiring manager and the recruiter experience was fractured. The recruiters thought they were doing a good job. The hiring managers were slating my team. The paper process, I've never seen anything quite like it. People used to go to these huge assessment days at the venues, and they'd come back with suitcases full of paperwork, and then sit for days on end, manually entering it into a database. Um, and we weren't really hitting our compliance requirements. Right to work used to make me panic. Um, and so it was just a hot mess. Um, the volume hiring is our lifeblood, and it was our biggest broken piece, and it was our biggest need to fix. Um, the speed to hire was critical, and um, because it was all broken, we were relying heavily on agencies, which was costing us a lot of money, and we had no real control over anything that we were doing. So when I arrived, I was asked, this is the single biggest thing that we need you to fix, and we need you to fix it first. Um, it's the heart of what we do. Um, and this was the beginning of my relationship with Eploy. Um, and the first thing I said to them was, we've got this um, system that is just in the process of being put in. It had just been commissioned as I arrived. Um, and I didn't know much about it. But what I did know in terms of what had been commissioned was that it was for professional hiring. And our biggest broken piece of work was the bulk hiring. And that was the beginning of our journey. Over the next eight years, we have incrementally gone down the road together, and this is what we did. Eploy and I sat down and agreed that we needed to very quickly build a process in the ATS for our bulk hiring, which didn't exist at the time. We didn't want a different system, so Eploy and my team built a parallel bulk hiring process in the system that sat alongside the professional hiring process. And to this day, we have two parallel processes depending on what type of candidate you are. They also built me a careers portal. I'm on my third generation of that careers portal because the other thing that we learned is careers portals continually change and we need to keep up with the market. So we kept it really simple and every two to three years we change it, we refresh it and their guys sit with us and say, this is what looks cool and trendy these days. This is what we think you should do. We have a lot of fun, and we change it. We work with my parent company on branding and make sure that we're aligned with our overarching message and our employee value proposition. But Eploy own it, so it's all very seamless. When we had sorted out the bulk hire ca candidate journey and got it to a much better place, because with casuals, we don't need to do the big onboarding piece, I went back to my business and said, what do you want me to fix next? What is the next big headache in the, in the field? And they said, the hiring process for employed people. 
So we then went down the road and put in the hiring manager portal where the requisition process happens. Um, and that was an alleluia moment for our field managers. They suddenly had much more visibility into the applicants, depending on who they are and what business they're in and how much involvement they do or don't want to have. The hiring managers now can take ownership and accountability to the right level of their own candidate pools. What helps us enormously is recs don't go missing. There's governance over the hiring process. Um, and that, within itself, really reduced our time to hire for candidates, the authorisation, the sign-off, the visibility, and the tracking. After that, it became a no-brainer that we would put in the onboarding portal because we were able to map the hiring manager portal into the onboarding portal. So for me, in the back office with my team, we were able to lift offer management out of the HR team, which was a manual process, and we worked with ePloy to make it all automated. So whatever was in the hiring manager portal at the point of offer became an automated e-sign offer portal for the candidate. So for the candidate, their whole experience suddenly became significantly different from how it had been previously. What became really exciting then was we were able to talk to ePloy about interfacing and integrating the system with other systems that we had. We, we have an, um, a pre-hire portal for the casuals and we have an induction portal for the employees and we fully integrated it into the ePloy onboarding portal. So now, before people even get into work, all of that is in a seamless journey within the onboarding portal. Because we have this huge um, contracting workforce, um, we have a very sophisticated time and attending system um, for workforce management where people self-select their shifts, make themselves available, bid, etc., etc., because that's, that is our lifeblood. And we were struggling on how to get people from A to B. So they've been accepted. We automatically transfer them straight into the workforce management system. Um, Additionally, now that all of our onboarding is automatic, we also now export the employed workforce to our HRIS system, which previously had been a double handling process. I think our epiphany moment came about 18 months ago, where one of our major clients, the Premiership Football Club, with the backdrop of all of the terror attacks um, two years ago, met with us and said that unprecedented in our industry, which is unregulated, they wanted us to background check every single person that worked for us, every single casual, whether they work two, week, two weekends a month or one weekend a month or five days a week. Even though they're not employed, every single person <coughs> needed to have a background check to work in their venue. This presented us with an enormous challenge, not only from a legal point of view, but from a practicality point of view, and the fact that if we put a process like that in place to a casual worker who could go out and get a weekend job, 10 a penny in London, how were we ever going to do that without disrupting their experience, making it arduous for them, and making it much easier for them to go and work for one of our competitors, none of whom do this. So we sat down, we went through an RFP, we picked a background checking company who were prepared to break all boundaries and build um, a process whereby when people apply to work for us at Delaware North and put their application in our ATS, with all the right sign-offs, their journey through to landing in our workforce management system goes all the way through and through the background checking vendor from our ePloy system automatically. If there's anything missing from their application, clearly the vendor will contact them, but they don't have to do anything. It's all done through automation because of the um, way we've made the systems work together. So we have ePloy, the vendor, and the workforce management system have all collaborated. We spent many months process mapping it and building the workflows. We heard yesterday that we've just done our number 5,000 check in just over a year on our workforce. And so we haven't seen any attrition in our attraction or in our conversion rates as a result. And our client is very happy, thankfully. 
So um, in terms of summarizing of our journey, wins, learns, and takeaways, there have been some amazing wins. There have been some huge learns and takeaways. Um, as a company, we've doubled in the last four years, and we've spread our geographic reach. But we've only had added one member to our recruitment team. Um, because we've been able to scale due to the infrastructure that we've built. So we've been able to focus on doing the right thing, having relationships with the field operators and connecting with our candidates instead of wheeling suitcases around the UK and punching stuff in. Um, the candidate experience we know is significantly different from surveys. Um, we've reduced our time to hire and um, the quality of our candidates is, is much better. We 100% feel safe. Um, we don't, I don't wake up at night worrying about compliance anymore. Um, the administration has been smashed out of the park, it just doesn't really exist anymore. Um, that's been a really big win, and the GDPR module in our system is just genius. Um, and the field are involved at the right time, the managers can be as involved or not as involved as they want to be, and that's really helped in our relationship management with the people that we see as our customers. Our learns have been, we are literally not the experts. Um, we see, we, I think we started off thinking we knew best, and um, we didn't. Um, so that's been helpful for us to take counsel and advice and guidance from people that are specialists in this field. Um, we can progress much faster in that way. Uh, nothing is forever. So I think initially, early days, we used to build stuff and think, great, done. And then, you know, six months later, think, oh, if only we'd done this, if only we'd done that. So the mindset is very much, this is an evolving story. It's always got to change to stay ahead of the game. Project management is a skill. Uh, you need the right people to keep this alive, to keep evolving and keep making sure that we've got the best solution and the best experience for our candidates and our hiring managers. Um, and we've got to be good at project managing to deliver that. Um, uh, and that, that hand in hand, that goes with deadlines. So we weren't very good at project managing these projects initially, and we were always missing deadlines. So we were over promising and under delivering. So that, that needed to change. Um, and our takeaways are um, to always look through the lens of the candidates and the hiring managers, and not to look through the lens of HR. We used to do that initially, and we used to think we were building great stuff, and then we'd go out and say, hey, look, and the managers would say, this is not what we want. So it's a collaboration. It's not an HR or recruitment um, piece of work. Um, our other learn and takeaway, really, was to always try and break what we're building. Um, because it's better to break it before we launch it than find out it didn't work after. Um, and that we've never finished. I think that was one of our biggest, biggest takeaways. It's always changing, it's always evolving, and to always have a mindset of what's next, so that we stay competitive, so that the candidates always want to come and work for us instead of our competitors. Um, the, the, the sort of my final example is, we are currently putting in a job architecture to our company um, in terms of we're building a career framework. And the job architecture we're putting in, um, I couldn't even have imagined even a year ago that we could have put into our company. It's a global architecture. It's going to be so great for people who want to really progress their careers internationally, but even to help people have clarity on how to develop themselves to be the best them. We couldn't have done this if we hadn't got this tool to where it is now because we're upgrading the hiring manager portal, ePloy are customizing it for us, um, and, and it's only been possible to do what we're doing because of the journey we've been on. And that's my story about our recruitment strategy.